in this video we're going to take a look at my reset shells for Medieval Knights. That's coming up! Alrighty guys, um, I wanted to, to do, show you guys some of my books and uh, I've got some really wonderful books here about the, the Medieval Knights. So this is, uh, let's take a look. The English Medieval Knight between 1200 and 1300 by Osprey. Osprey books are really fantastic. They use a lot of really excellent source material. Lots of great illustrations which are, are very, very good and a lot of really fantastic information that actually really looks at some of the these images and talks about them and describes them uh, and a lot of really sort of key features that people might not necessarily realize i think a lot of the osprey books are kind of um, big instigators how a lot of us get our, ourselves into um, historical reenactment and uh, passions and enthusiasms for uh, for medieval history. So that's a really good read and highly recommended. A Night in History by Francis Giles. This is a fantastic book. Relatively small as you can see. Only costs around about $20 Australian. Uh, around about $15 Canadian. Fantastic book. Um, so much information. Uh, and I, I really, really recommend this book very highly. Those of you who might have a bit of extra time on your hands, um, this is a good book to read. The English Medieval Knight between 1300 and 1400, uh, again by Osprey. Again, fantastic read. Now what's really interesting here is, as always and as throughout history, uh, war brings about huge advances in technology. So. This is why these books are broken down the way that they are in, in periods of 1,000 years, in, in periods of 100 years. So much changes, so much changes in, in that short period of time, relatively speaking. Like, for example, 20 years ago, I didn't even have a mobile phone. Um, so in a period of 100 years in terms of warfare, uh, again, so much change. There were so many differences between weapons, armor, tactics, uh, strategies, procedures and policies, the way the armies worked and some of the key kind of people involved, uh, so much changes. So these books are really, really fascinating to read. Arms and Armour of the Medieval Knight by David Edge. This book was given to me by a, a really, really, really good friend of mine, um, Damien, and uh, he, he's a really great guy. Very passionate and um, very kind of uh, forthcoming in his views, um, but he's a great guy and I, I really kind of appreciate the books that he gave me. Um, you can pick up a lot of books surprisingly uh, through charity shops, through secondhand bookshops, through, and there are so many, you can pick up a lot of these books, uh, not only um, new obviously online they can be quite inexpensive and if you get the ebook versions again they're usually a lot cheaper still however um, if you really want to get some bargains some of these are charity shops and some of the sort of secondhand shops are, are really good some of the, uh, the you know secondhand bookshops are fantastic and I got some really good books through through those myself Alrighty, let's see, let's see what else there is. The Eyewitness series of The Night. Eyewitness books and Osprey books are, I truly believe, really um, are the, the kind of foundation for where so many of us get our passions for history, particularly medieval history and, and medieval warfare and medieval reenactment. Um, and these books are fantastic. They have great illustrations. They're really good ways of being able to communicate information to newer people. 
Um, I like to have a lot of these books that I can then loan out to friends of mine or to new reenactors within the group and be able to give them some really good source material so that they can create their impressions and costumes and find uh, appropriate pieces of kit. So many of us, and, and I'm as guilty of it as anyone, get into medieval reenactment and you look online because there aren't that many brick and mortar stores, certainly in Australia, that do this kind of thing. And those are few and far between, especially geographically. So it can be very tempting to, to look online and you think, wow, that looks, no, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. Not realising that these different pieces have absolutely nothing to do with each other. You can look at, you know, a really nice belt and you think, wow, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I definitely want that. Not realising or understanding that um, it absolutely has nothing to do with the period you're trying to reenact. And I'm as guilty of that as everybody. Like so many reenactors, I have my little pile of shame and I'm fortunate enough to be able to sell a lot of that stuff to, uh, to LARPers and to cosplayers and to other people who might be interested in it because it has no further value to me if I realise it's not, for, not appropriate to the period. Some of these books, I must say, are absolutely fantastic reads. They don't necessarily need to cost that much money. Um, and I highly, highly recommend for those of you who are into uh, some of this sort of the reenactment to get some of these books. Please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what your favourite books are. I'd love to hear what you think of my books. And um, I, I really do look forward to hearing from you. Righto, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.